My favorite tool for charcoal drawing isn't even technically charcoal, but it works much the same way and it has made the whole experience of drawing portraits so much easier and more fun for me and also less messy and I'm kind of addicted to it at this point. What is this thing that I'm talking about? Well, it's called pan pastel and it's not really a tool, it's an art medium. It's a soft pastel in compressed powder form that come in these little makeup looking containers. And I use it together with one of these palette knives with little replaceable spongy tips. And you can also use other types of sponges with pan pastel, like these ones, for example. Pan pastel comes in many colors, but I use just the black one. It both looks and functions like vine charcoal, which is the raw, unprocessed kind of charcoal sticks. Like vine, it's dark, but not fully black the way compressed charcoal is. And like vine, it's much easier to erase, depending on what paper you're using. And there are also different kinds of these palette knives with different shaped blades. I've mostly been using this rounded tip, but there are three other shapes that I am excited to try out as well. And you can purchase these replacement tips for them in packs of 10 or more, I think. Now, let me show you how I use this tool for portrait drawings. I'm gonna paint this lady here. And the reference photo is from one of my favorite Instagram accounts. It's called Earth's World, who has graciously allowed me to use these photos in my art and art teaching. And I'll put the link to the account in the description because it's a gold mine for portrait artists. So much variety and so many interesting faces with interesting expressions and often really good, strong lighting as well. I almost exclusively use these references in my portrait practice nowadays. I love faces with beards and wrinkles and squinting eyes. It gives me more to work with than those perfectly smooth and symmetrical models on Pinterest. So the first thing I need to do here is to exchange the tip on this palette knife because, as you can see, it's starting to crumble a bit. The paper I'm using here does have some tooth to it and that probably wears the sponges down pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna pop a new one on and off I go. The first thing I do with any portrait is to establish the basic shapes and proportions. I just lightly dip the palette knife in the pastel and I start drawing with it finding the overall silhouette of the head and the cap in this case. I'm also laying in some of the shadow shapes that I see. I can adjust the darkness of the strokes by how much I saturate the sponge. It works kind of like a brush in that the first strokes are the darkest and then it gradually wears off until you need to dip it again. I vary my strokes with the knife, sometimes drawing thinner lines with the edge or the tip and sometimes putting in a lots of tone or broader strokes with the flat part. Same way you do with a charcoal stick. But I feel like I have more control with the knife because I get some distance to the paper. I've always found it easier to get my lines right if I use a long pencil or a brush and I sort of grip it further out. My lines get less squiggly that way. A fun technique that I love doing with the palette knife is to draw with the flat part at an angle, like this. So starting at the place of darkest shadow and then working outwards. It creates a nice gradient. And I really love the smeary look of these strokes. I keep going like this until I have something that looks like a ghost face, <laughs> like a blurry version of the face with no real details and very soft edges. And that's when I go in with my charcoal pencil. And to avoid smudging the drawing with my palm, I'm using a long brush to rest my hand on. And then I'm drawing in the details and filling in the deepest darks with the pencil. I don't do this all over the drawing, only on the parts that I want to draw the attention to. I like to have contrast between soft and sharp lines in my drawings and to leave some parts of the drawing looking a bit unfinished.
here I am softening my pencil lines with a blending stump. And to finish it all off, I'm going back in with a pan pastel and deepening the shadows. And then this lady is done and my hands barely got smudgy at all. I highly recommend that you try pan pastel if you're into charcoal but are also kind of a clean freak like me or if you like to take a more painterly approach to your drawings. There will definitely be more charcoal and pan pastel videos on this channel going forward and also more portrait tips because that's what I'm obsessed with right now and practicing and learning about. There are so many ways to use charcoal and so many ways to approach a portrait. I think I'm finally starting to find my style and my preferred tools and techniques for portraits. So if you want more charcoal tips and portrait tutorials, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also check out my other videos about charcoal that I've linked in the description. And subscribe to my weekly newsletter where I also talk about what I'm learning and working on and inspiration and resources that I've found. And all the links are down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another one.